We're going behind the scenes at a hotel in London's West End. There's plenty of maths involved. Pause the video and watch each clip as often as you like. Soho, we felt, what a great location, a great place to be, especially in the fact that it's sort of off as an oasis in the middle of a crazy area. We have people that have high expectations and therefore we have to meet their needs in terms of service. Average length of stay, two and a half to three days now, which has increased since sort of about three or four years ago when it was more like sort of one and a half to two. And also they, they're very much sort of in and out of the hotel and they're generally here just for another purpose, i.e. they've come here on business and therefore they need to make sure that when they come and stay with us that we make their stay here as easy as possible so they can do the deals that they're coming to do. My name is Roger van Veldhuizen. Uh, I'm reception manager. At the moment we are extremely busy actually. I think it's due to the Christmas shopping um, but also a lot of conventions uh, and events going on in London so we're um, fully booked actually. We've got 80, 85 rooms and uh, 6 apartments. That's 2 bedroom apartment or a studio apartment. Um, the good thing is all the, all the rooms are different. These are the keys to the hotel rooms. When do you think most of the guests are in their rooms? How would you work out the volume of this bath and how long it might take to fill up? I'm Cheryl O'Dell, I'm the executive head housekeeper of the Soho Hotel. In this room, this is the main housekeeping office and um, in here we have um, all the food and beverage in here, which is kept down here for all the food and beverage staff to come and collect and we have all the uh, spare bedding that we don't need upstairs on all the floors. In each room we would need uh, two sheets and one top sheet to cover the blanket. We would need four pillowcases, we would need um, six sheets six um, like bath sheets, six hand towels, four bath mats. Um, it depends because different rooms are different sizes, so obviously if they're suites they would have more towels and apartments. How would you work out how much bed linen the hotel needs to have in stock? How would you work out how much dirty laundry is produced at the hotel each day? And when might the laundry staff be busiest? These are the toilet rolls. Uh, in every departure room we change the um, toilet roll to a new one so that when a guest goes into a room they always feel like they're the first person inside the room. We order roughly about 14 cases a week. So how would you work out how many toilet rolls are used in the hotel in a week? So in terms of Rotors, it's very much um, knowing that you, you've got X amount of rooms to clean, so it takes them so long to do a room, therefore you need X amount. That's, that's quite easy.
how would you work out how many housekeepers the hotel needs to employ? How would you work out how many people the restaurant can cater for in a day and how many staff they might need? My name is Alan Petrie, I'm the food and beverage manager at the Soho Hotel and I've been here for approximately four weeks. The restaurant is 85 seats approximately. We can set anything up to 100 uh, when we take into account other tables and we can split the restaurant. The restaurant is open from 7 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock in the morning for breakfast periods. And then we're open from 12 o'clock in the afternoon to 3 o'clock for lunch. And then we're open again from 5 p.m. through to 11 o'clock in the evening for dinner. If it's a table of two, you're looking at approximately one hour for them to dine. If it's a four, you're looking possibly to an hour, hour and a half and anything over that you, you could be an hour and a half to up to two and a half hours but it obviously depends on how quickly you get them in seated and take their order. If you do have a large table you can get their order quickly and you will be able to push up the speed of service and get them through within an hour if necessary. How much cutlery, crockery and glassware do you think they need? How many different combinations of three-course meal could you choose from this menu? In terms of our staff uh, to guests, we always believe that service is paramount, so therefore we have a ratio of two to one. The highest ratio is food and beverage because you do tend to there have to sort of, in terms of service there, um, we do have more staff to the, to the guests that we're serving there. So first of all, it's food and beverage were the highest. The restaurant is 32 tables, so we split that into two areas of 16, 16 tables each per section. There is one supervisor in each section who has an additional waiter with them. So that is four people in total on the floor. And in addition to that, we have a host on the front desk to meet, seat and greet our guests. And then we also have what we call a commie waiter, which would be in the back area in the kitchen, who will then assist the chefs in getting the food to the guests as quickly as possible. Employees work on average for a quarter of the hours in a week. How would you work out how many staff the hotel should employ? Check up, four tuna, two truffle salad, one beetroot salad, three crab mayonnaise. The average spend for one breakfast lunch. is about no £14 sauce. pounds approximately at the moment. And lunch is um, anywhere from £25 up to £35, pounds, which includes food and beverage. And in the evening, people, they like to socialise more and the average spend goes up, so it could be anything from £35 up to £60. Food is our sort of our, our, our big area and of course um, when it comes to making money it is least profitable area because you're taking food in, raw food, you're, you're turning it into something and then you're pretending it out again so it takes, takes the, the manpower to do that, it takes the expenses in terms of the gas and, and the power and so on and also the salaries to do that and then turn it out again. How do you think the hotel works out the price of each dish on the menu? My name's Robin Reed. I'm the head chef here at the Soho Hotel. Today I'm going to be cooking uh, a risotto. We start off by cooking a, a base for the risotto. We've got three kilos of risotto rice. We've got between eight and ten large shallots, and we've got between eight and ten litres of stock. It should be enough for about 30 portions. 
Depends on the size of shallot as well. I mean, you, you want, I've, I find that you want about, about a quarter of what you're looking at with the rice. I mean, nothing, it's not a precise weight to the rice and so on. You don't want too much. You just want a little bit to start the base of the cooking process, really. I'm just going to chop them a little bit finer because there's a few larger pieces in there. By right, next stage, we're going to start to cook the risotto. First of all, we're going to put some oil into the pan. We'll then put the shallots in and start to soften those so they go a, almost sort of a translucent colour. We'll then add the rice and cook that the same so it's, it goes, starts to sort of go translucent. And then we'll start to gradually add the stock, which we've got here, which is about, about 8 to 10 litres at the moment. Still to be finished, so it's still going to be cooked a little bit longer as well. Let me mix that in. Just garnish it with a few deep fried sage leaves. How would you change this recipe to make the right amount of risotto for eight people? Hi, my name is Zoran Peric and I'm a Fundel Group Bar Manager. For this specific drink, I'm going to make for you today, which is called Oriental Passion. What I'm using is fresh raspberries, passion fruit, fresh mint, lime, and ginger. Two rings of fresh ginger, lime, and I'm going to use four quarters, mint, five leaves, and then raspberries, exactly five. I'm just gonna muddle this with this first. You, in order for me to do a really nice measurement, I'm gonna use a measure which is 75 ml. A lime juice and pomegranate juice. And I'm gonna add passion fruit. Need a good shake because we have so many different flavors inside, and we really want all of them to work in, in as one. On the top of my sling glass with the crushed ice, we're gonna double strain the drink because we don't want all these bits and pieces to end up in our drink. We're gonna garnish with a nice sprig of mint, small hidden raspberry there. Here you go, enjoy. How would you scale up this recipe so that everyone in your group can have a drink? We, we really do delve into to sort of the figures and the maths. And maths, I think, I mean, oh gosh, you know, it's, it's in everything we do. 